my most anticipated future innovation that could change the world so dramatically, and that is... Hey, holidays are every day, and today is National Innovation Day. I've got 10 insane future innovations that may change the world during our lifetime. And after I read each one, I'm going to guess what year I think it'll exist by and set a reminder on my phone that I'll hopefully still have and hopefully still be alive for. So let's get started with number one here. Brain reading robots. You heard it right, dude. Research is already well underway. Tests have already been done at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology. Uh, so basically, they put an EEG brain reading it's that's a thing that they use for like lie detector tests i believe eeg brain reading cap on someone who is tetraplegic and connect it to a robot arm and it would automatically determine when the arm had made a move that the brain considered incorrect for example moving too close to the obstacle or going too fast and over time the algorithm will automatically adjust to the person's preferences and brain signals they plan to use this for many things like controlling a wheelchair with your freaking brain dude that's that sounds amazing. You, I was gonna say you don't have to think about it, but no, you do have to think up, think about it. But that's all you have to do. And there's something I've heard that we know more about the universe that we live in than we do about how our brains work. And I don't know if that's true, but I believe that to be true. It, I know it's difficult to figure out how the brain works and how to capture that electronically. But I, I, I do think we're getting there. Um, and I think we'll get there by 2080. So I'm gonna be setting a reminder on my phone. Number two, 3D printed bones. Now 3D printing has already been a thing for a while and used on a smaller scale. For example, if you don't remember, I had a permanent crown put on one of my front teeth recently. And even this little tiny small town dentist office did a live 3d scanning of my tooth with like a cashier scanner in the shape of a wand like a like a vibrator with lasers shooting out of one side of it that that was plugged into a computer from like 1980 and had it printed there the same day. Next, I had an hour, actually. So this is kind of already happening, but what's special about these 3D printed bones is that because of the use of tricalcium phosphate, the body will remodel the implants into vascularized bone. To achieve the best integration possible, the implants are a porous structure and feature large pores and canals for cells to attach to and reform bro. Bo bro. Bro. Bro, do you hear that brown? They're bro they're browing, bro. They're gonna be browing bones in your body. Now, let me say that in English. They're gonna be growing bones in your body. They're gonna plant a bone seed and it's gonna grow into a real functioning full-fledged bone. I think we're pretty close to this. I say I put 2030 on here. I'm gonna bump that up a little bit. You know, I think that's a little advanced. 2040. By 2040, we will have bone that can be planted inside of you and grow to be even stronger bone. Lab made dairy products. So you guys know they're already doing this. They're they're all they've been trying to do this. And there's quite a few companies that think they've already got it. Let's see. The dairy industry is not environmentally friendly, not even close. It's responsible for 4% of the world's carbon emissions. Yeah. Animal agriculture is by far the number one reason for global warming. Like above cars trains planes buses combined so this is this is going to be revolutionary when they can start making stuff in a lab compared with meat milk isn't actually that difficult to create in a lab rather than grow it from stem cells most researchers attempt to produce it in a process of fermentation looking to produce the milk proteins whey and casein 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 some products are already at market in the US from companies such as Perfect Day with ongoing work focused on reproducing the mouthfeel and nutritional benefits of regular cow's milk. Beyond that, researchers are working on lab-produced mozzarella that melts perfectly on top of pizza as well as other cheeses and ice cream. I'm all about this, you know what I mean? Screw it, we're headed that way. Event One day, every food item is gonna be made in a lab and then it's only a matter of time before they start creating new sh in a lab, you know what I mean? Like right now, we're trying to focus on creating things that are already real things. Like milk and meat and cheese but like once they start figuring out how to make that they could just they can make new shit. uh 2030 you know in less than 10 years i say eight years from now you're gonna start seeing lab 
made at a grocery store. Number four, digital twins to track your health. Basically, a U.S. company has built a scanner that will measure hundreds of biomarkers in around an hour, from hormone levels to fat building up in your liver to markers of inflammation and any number of cancers. It intends to use this data to produce a 3D digital avatar of a patient's body known as a digital twin that can be tracked over time and updated with each new scan. Absolutely revolutionary in finding sicknesses and diseases or cancers way before they would have ever known it and, and actually being able to easily defeat it or get over it or get treatment for it. This takes next level technology. I don't think we're going to have this until 2060. That's my prediction. 2060, you're going to be going to the doctor. They're going to be scanning you with a magic wand that looks like a vibrator that's got scanners shooting out the side of it. And they're going to scan your body and they're going to be like, you got freaking AIDS. Number five, virtual reality universes. I mean, this, this, it, this is it. We're here. Unlike the brand's previous VR adventures like the Oculus Quest 2, this won't be a device for the average consumer, instead looking to offer the best VR experience they can make. Cambria has been reported to be focused on an advanced eye and face tracking to improve accuracy of avatars and your in-game movements, a higher resolution, increased field of view, and even trying to make the headset significantly smaller. I mean, you could technically say we already have virtual reality universes, but I think this is like next level. Like you could be able to basically just put on glasses like these and it's just going to seem so real and you're going to be able to walk through a grocery stuff and put things in your cart and actually pay for them. And then they're going to be sent to your house. And I think this is happening by 2030, guys. This is right around the corner. Now, before we move on, it's freaking pickle time week. As you know, we don't just celebrate daily holidays and monthly holidays. We celebrate weekly holidays. And it's pickle time all week this week. So why not eat some pickles, guys? Break out the pickles. Eat them up. Number six, green funerals. This is quite interesting. I actually didn't know uh, the average cremation reportedly releases 400 kilograms of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Cremating dead people is even detrimental to our world. In Washington state in the U.S., you should be composted instead. Bodies are laid in chambers with bark, soil, straw, and other compounds that promote natural decomposition. Within 30 days, your body is reduced to soil that can be returned to a garden or woodland. Recompose the company behind the process claims it uses an eighth of the carbon dioxide of cremation. Dude, sign me up. I mean, I'm only 23. I'm going to start my will right now. Bury me and turn me into a freaking rainforest, dude. I don't care what you do with my body, but you've got to do something good for the environment. I want this. And I think, oh, I missed the part. An alternative technology uses fungi. In 2019, the late actor Luke Perry was buried in a bespoke mushroom suit designed by a startup called. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How the fuck do you say that, actually? Koyo. Koyo? Maybe it's Koyo. The company claims its suit made with mushrooms and other microorganisms that aid decomposition and naturalize toxins that are released when a body usually decays. Most alternative ways of disposing of our bodies after death is not based on new technology. They're just waiting for, our, for societal acceptance to catch up. People are like, oh no, I've got to be buried properly. Put me in a golden casket and bury my beautiful looking body. Grow plants, spread my body out, you know, grow plants all over the world. I say 2040, but I, I think for most people, it's a moral dilemma that they have to kind of get over. Um, all right, let's keep moving. Number seven, artificial eyes. This is crazy, dude. Bionic eyes have been a mainstay for of science fiction for decades, but now real world research is beginning to catch up with far-sighted storytellers. A raft of technologies is coming to the market that restored sight to people with different kinds of vision impairment. In January, 2021, just last year, folks, Israeli surgeons implanted the world's first artificial cornea into a bilaterally blind 70 year old man when his bandages were removed the patient could read and recognize family members immediately the implant also fuses naturally to human tissue without the recipient's body rejecting it i didn't know that that's pretty insane montage university in australia are working on trials for a system whereby users wear a pair of glasses fitted with a camera this sends data directly to the implant which sits on the surface of the brain and gives users rud a rudimentary sense of sight seems a little unnecessary like why, why make it look like somebody's wearing glasses if they can't see it all? You know what I mean? Like just give them 
I mean, I guess I, I guess it's the, the sake of trying to make an eye that's going to look real and also be functional. Like maybe it's just easier to just be like, here you go. You have glasses and you can have a little camera and it's going to send a signal to your brain. My original prediction was 2050, but I'm saying 2050. 40, dude. 2040. You could be able to get an artificial eye. Number eight, airports for drones and flying taxis. You know how crazy the traffic is. There's always so much space up there in the sky. If only we could start building a second civilization up there. Well, that might just be happening. It's being built in Coventry. The hub will be a pilot scheme and hopefully a proof for concept for the company behind it. Powered completely off-grid by a hydrogen generator. The idea is to remove the need for as many delivery vans and personal cars on our roads. Replacing them with a clean alternative in the form of new type of small aircraft and designs being developed by Hyundai and Airbus, amongst others. Infrastructure is going to be important. Organizations like the Civil Aviation Authority are looking into the establishment of air corridors that might link a city center with a local airport or distribution center. I think I, I, I think the common shipping, shipping packages and stuff with drones may be sooner. Flying taxis? I, I don't know. I don't know, dude. I'm going all the way to say 2080. No, no, no. I'm going to stick with my original guess. 2100. I probably won't even be alive for that unless I live to be 102. I think it just seems like a lot. It seems like a lot of, oh, first of all, we got to build an airport floating. I don't think we're anywhere close to that. It's also got to be not horrible for the for the environment. Also seems like something not in our reach. Number nine, energy storing bricks. Scientists have found a way to store energy in the red bricks that are used to build houses. Researchers led by Washington University in St. Louis, Missouri, have developed a method that can turn cheap and widely available building materials into smart bricks that can store energy like a battery. How do you recharge them though? Although the research is still in the proof of concept stage, the scientists claim that walls made of these bricks could store a substantial amount of energy and can be recharged hundreds of thousands of times within an hour. Hold on guys, let me go plug in my brick. This one really seems like science fiction. I say 2080. Flying taxis a little bit further off than that. Energy storing bricks, 2080. And finally, my most favorite and anticipated future innovation that could change the world so dramatically you couldn't even begin to imagine what we could do with it. And that is internet for everyone. I sensationalized it a little bit, but listen guys, this should already be a thing. I feel like we're kind of behind the ball on that a little bit. You know what I mean? How do we not have the technology or resources to make Wi-Fi worldwide? Maybe not worldwide, but a little bit more like cellular service. You know what I mean? It's like you get it mostly everywhere. There's certain pockets where it's gonna, where you're not going to get it, but like it should just be universal Wi-Fi. This has been in my dreams for years and I can't wait until it happens. And it's only a matter of time. I mean, let's see, uh, Google is slowly trying to solve the problem using helium balloons. What? Beam the internet to inaccessible areas while Facebook has abandoned plans to do the same using drones, which means companies like Kyber are stealing a march. They've taken a different approach by launching their own network of shoebox sized micro satellites into low earth orbit, which wake up a modern uh, plugged into, which wake up a modern a modem. Wow! Which wake up a modem plugged into your computer or device when it flies over and delivers your data. 2040, dude. 2040, internet for everyone. And cable companies are going to be pissed. Because let's be honest, everybody's already gotten rid of their cable TV. You don't need cable TV. You got streaming services. You get all the streaming services in the world. You got streaming services that deliver you live TV. What do you need to pay cable for? You only need to pay cable for internet. By 2040, we're going to have internet for everybody for free. Cable companies out of business just like blockbuster did definitely check out that full article on sciencefocus.com link in the description to read even more amazing future innovations their list has 22 ideas i only read 10 of them there's some pretty insane stuff on here like what what do we get to sweat powered smart watches self-healing living concrete living robots you gotta go read it it's not a sponsor either i'm just properly citing my source read that in celebration of nat national invention what is today national innovation day and of course make sure to like comment share and subscribe to support the channel but before i go it's national canned food month uh, and as you know from last wednesday i'm celebrating every wednesday this month by eating a weird canned food and today i've got some fancy 
white crab meat. This probably actually isn't even that weird, but um, I, I, I don't think I'm going to be a huge fan of it. So that's why I picked it and then it happened to be in our cabinet. So that's why I picked it. I have no idea how long this has been in my cabinet. Either. I don't think it's supposed to look like that. Best by August 2022. Like I realized that hasn't happened yet, but you realize canned food usually lasts forever. That means this was probably bought in like 20 freaking 15. All I smell is like metal from the can. No, no, no. That's been in that can too long. The essence of the metal has spread to all the meat. That's all I got for you. Thanks for watching. I already said that. Actually, I didn't say that. Thanks for watching. But I already said, let me make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. But I'll say it again. Make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and click that bell. Even though it says on my channel art every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time sharp. You don't even really need the bell. You just need to remember that. But you should click the bell. I think you should click the bell. I think you should get a notification when I upload a new video. And that's just what I think. I'll see you on Friday. There's really nowhere to go. If I slide that way, I'm gonna knock that cup over on that post. If I slide this way, I'm gonna run right into this light like I do every time. So that's it. I'm just gonna sit here and wait till the video ends.